Ha! I'm back. Now, I hope I'm not uh, putting out too much uh, information that's not understandable. I hope I can explain this uh, as simple as possible. Now, I'm going to get back on to uh, the termite drive and, and the short pants crap and all that stuff. <laughs> okay, now why that stuff won't work, I think we've seen part of. And uh, let's see the rest of it. And uh, I, th I think I can just uh, rotate this camera a little bit here and kind of point down. Okay, here's the switch panel for that motor generator. Now we're taught this is this this termite idiot claims, and I, I think he probably does have two junk old modern 10 double E's. I think he the only photo that creep has ever posted was a fuzzy one or something like that. Okay. And supposedly he ripped out the the motor generator drives and installed his. It's like drilled into my head forever. A Parker Eurotherm double drive with a stack together with a ripple filter. <laughs> Does that kind of shit, huh? Well, okay. Well, that's just crap. And that stuff's not going to work, and there's a, there's a bunch of reasons why. Now, look at the switches for this machine here. I mean, this panel here is the size of four of those things. And look at the size of the contacts. That controls that heavy-duty three-horsepower motor. And this here, look at this. These things here or shields to keep that direct current from arcing. Yeah, that flips down like that. And that's how they work. There's an interlock here. Okay, the way the motor works, and I will get more personal. <laughs> the way the motor works, Full horsepower is at base speed. And base speed on these machines is under 1,200 RPMs, between 1,000 and 1,200 RPMs. And base speed at that point, the field in the direct current motor is receiving full voltage, around 115 volts. Uh, whether the uh, tube drive or this motor generator now, okay, I don't want to get too far, too, too far ahead there. We're going to talk about base speed and full horsepower. So you got 115 volts, full voltage to the field, and 220 volts to the armature, okay? So if you want to slow down the speed, then the drive cranks down the voltage to the armature, but maintains full field. If you want to go above base speed, the armature is maintained at 220 volts, and then the 115 volt field is reduced, and then the motor speeds up. And uh, the motor, can actually run away and blow the windings off itself. So they have a safety called a field loss relay. And that shuts the machine down if the field voltage gets too low and there's a danger of the motor running away. Okay? So, to um, get full horsepower, you got full voltage and uh, full voltage to the field, around 1100 RPM. When you drop 
the field and the motor speeds up, it still has that power because, you know, it's picking up RPMs and there's momentum like you wouldn't believe going on there. And as soon as we start reading, we reach the top speed on this machines are dangerous. And I'm going to point out, point that out. Oh. <laughs> so here's the problem with the Mickey Mouse termite short pants crap that they can't figure out. And that is to reach higher than base speed. These cheap drives will only go to base speed because they only have um, armature weakening, okay? So when you get up to full armature voltage, the motor's running like 1200 RPM and it's not gonna run the weight any faster than that. So what they have to do is add in another rheostat, another knob to turn down and to remember to turn up. I don't know what you do. I don't know what the hell you do. What do you do with that? Because I'll tell you something. I mean, the drive depends on dynamic braking. And dynamic braking happens um, when they cut the... Uh, Armature voltage uh, over from the motor to these uh, resistors here, okay? So the drive motor is, is turned into a generator and it brings the machine rapidly to a stop. Okay, and that's the problem <laughs> with this other stuff. Look at the size of those. Look at those. Those are big nickel. What is that stuff? Uh, kind of a nickel cadmium um, old time heater wire, coil wire there. Look at the wiring on this thing here. The size of the, of, of the stuff. And you'll find, we'll find the same thing over on the tube drive because we're going to look at that. Okay, there's all kinds of other things going on here. There's these uh, resistors here that keep the machine from slamming at, uh, when you put it in forward and reverse. And there's an anti-plugging relay that stop, and I'm gonna demonstrate that, and all the machines work the same. That is really cool. That way you can flip the machine from forward directly to reverse. The anti-plugging relay kicks in, engages the dynamic braking. <laughs> it is just really cool. And then when it comes to a stop, it'll pause for about a half second, then take off in the opposite direction. That's fun to demonstrate. And uh, you know, uh, that's part of the threading action, too, on these machines. So, next, where's that cup of coffee? You know, we got a high fire danger warning here, and there's like smoke in the air. We got, um, a lot of forest and uh, stuff, but the forest usually doesn't catch on fire up here in the mountains and stuff. Uh, the sage and stuff, and uh, this is kind of a green spot, kind of in a semi-arid spot. Wow, wow, it's got a lot of springs here. Okay, now here's the problem with variable speed legs. It's horrible, and you'll see machines like the... Uh, Launch and Shipley ABS in not running condition, and it's because it's really easy to overload them. And one of the problems here with uh, lathes in particular, that's not as bad with milling machines, is high start loads. And you know, this is just a perfect example. Uh, this probably weighs 50 pounds here, and the truck probably weighs 40. So we got 90 pounds 
to <laughs> instantly stop and reverse if needed. So high start loads means high heat buildup. And that's the problem uh, with any machine, but particularly electronic or electrical type of variable speed drives. Okay, I'm not talking about uh, the more jig bore, the hard inch uh, variable uh, pulleys. We're talking about electronic or electrically generated uh, uh, speed. And one of the things I think might be beneficial is, is I have considerable hard inch experience, but on the HC chucker. But I know the spindle well, same spindle, okay? So I can uh, kind of dive into that while I'm describing the Monarch. And you know, the uh, uh, guy that showed me the most on the Monarch uh, machine here, who was instantly chased off 20 years ago off the PM4 uh, by the bullies there, but he's, you know, he's not a, a Harley mechanic. He doesn't know how to deal with these people, you know. <laughs> and to deal with some pretty tough people, you know. There's a, there's a group of motorcycle people here that are like gladiators. So I'm not kidding you. They're, they're scary. They, uh, I get along with them because, you know, I'm a mechanic and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't go to parties and stuff like that because they punch each other in the face for fun. <laughs> okay, all types out here, and I, I know uh, uh, one or two of them were machines over the years. Okay, so here, here we got this heavy switching, heavy armature, starting, you know, heavy loads. Okay, so I, I hope I could uh, uh, kind of convey that, how that works. And uh, with variable ma speed machines, as you slow them down uh, towards uh, most of them, some of them will have like three speed ranges, and the Monarch turned up we has uh, two. But it's like you kick in the back here when you need to, you know? You don't want to overspeed things or, you know, uh, overwork the drive, run it too slow in uh, open belt. So you have to make judgment calls with this, with these variable speed uh, uh, machines, or, or the, you're going to damage them. And I'm going to get very, very detailed in that. Okay, now this is really fun. I, I like fun stuff like this. Okay. So how do you maintain these uh, commutators on a motor generator lathe? There's like one for sale on uh, HGR for like 5,000 bucks, you know. I don't know, it's probably okay. Yeah, it, uh, I'd probably rather buy that than uh, the Grizzly 13 by 40. <laughs> but. I could probably fix that thing. I, I was looking at it. It's a motor generator machine, round dial type, you know, that's, uh, uh, I'm, I can get into that a little bit too. There's some handicap there, and I have it with uh, my manufacturing lathe, and it's not fine enough feed. So, <laughs> so there's that. But uh, back on to how do you maintain three commutators and there's three there's the spindle motor there's this one here then there's another one up here another little generator called the exciter and that does the job of the small tube the field tube the three 3J, whatever that little tube is. Field tube puts out 115 volts or something. Well, there's a little generator that runs up on top here. And it's driven by a pulley here. I, I think I can get that picture in this video so you can see that. I got it in shot, okay? So, most people would take and uh, 
cut this with the uh, tool, sharp tool. I've probably got an example here that'd be pretty good. Oh, where, where, where? It would be maybe something uh, like this one. Maybe something like that. Kind of a round nose, more flat. This one here has probably got a little too much rake. It does. But you want something kind of flat. But what happens is it smears this coffer together, and then you got to clean out the grooves. And the little south bend that I had, I had a south bend junior, which was a great little machine. I know some of you people have those out there. They're very good. A little nine inch. I think they made an eight inch. Mine was a nine inch with a four and a half foot bed. And it was a change gear machine. I really liked that. It was, uh, did a good job. Well, it had a little uh, attachment. It had a little sharp saw that went back and forth. You did it by hand. And then Atlas had a little motor one with a little star wheel on it that would go and clean out those grooves. That's what they did. I hope I didn't have that up too high, but uh, you, the, the wave tool can smear that over quite a bit, okay? So, what do you do? Well, the, <laughs> now this is hilarious, and it took me a bit of research to figure this out, because I'm curious. I got to know. I want to know everything. <laughs> The instructions right here for this motor generator drive says, let me get out my magnifier. I don't know if you need it. You don't need it, but I need it. Okay, it says right here. You see this? If commutator is burned, dress with four aught sandpaper or a fine commentator stone then underlined it goes do not use emery or carborundum mm -hmm. okay now this is uh, the later drive and you can see is a 440 volt, three-phase original wire. You can wire them down. Serial number. There's a serial number on there. And I think that might, I don't think that is the, uh, yeah, there's the serial number right here of the, the 10 double E it came off of. And uh, I picked this up at uh, a local scrapyard. Looks like 35091. Okay, but this is the later uh, drive. I'm looking for the model number. Do have the serial number? I don't know. It might be on another, oh, it, it's on the motor generator itself, maybe not this control pattern. Okay, so, what about those uh, fine commutator dressing stones? Well, I happen to have that. And uh, so, I will get set up and we will apply. Okay. Okay, this video um, turned out to be a little bit uh, longer-winded than I planned it on uh, talking. But anyway, I think I put out some useful information, so I'm going to recap what, what we were talking about. I was uh, showing why the foolish people on that uh, PM forum uh, pushing that stupid drive idea is, is stupid. And uh, I don't know if these people are what, supposed to be heroes or what, machine restorers? It's ridiculous, it's butchery. Okay, so I mentioned that uh, lathes uh, have very high start loads. 
We have an example of a high start load sitting in this axis and almost 90 pounds. So that's, this is a geared head machine. Of course, uh, uh, variable speed machines just be a little bit harder on. I pointed out how heavy the switching is, you know, and uh, how wimpy off the shelf stuff is. Okay, now I pointed out about these uh, commentators. And I demonstrated that this one here was damaged inadvertently with a file, right? And we're going to fix that. Okay. And I, and I uh, said, oh, back here, where's that panel? The, on the panel it says use uh, commutator conditioning stone. Finishing. Look at that, it says finishing. Didn't it say something like that on the panel? What do we have here? Coarse. Commutator conditioning stuff. Let's take a quick look. <clears throat> I'm going to load this uh, video immediately. And then I'm going to come back right back out here. And I'm going to apply these. That's coarse. Yeah, it's sticking out. And what's cool about these stones, hold on. Here, I got it out. What do we got? I wrote on them. Can't see it anymore. Okay, this one here is like coarse, extra coarse. Maybe that's, me that's medium right here. And I got a fine and polishing. So let's, let's do it. Real quick here, I'll be back with that in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.